Welcome back to Up North at 4. And joining me now, very special guest. This is LJ Raider, or as you may know him on social media, he's the art but make it sports guy. And essentially, LJ, what you do is you take photographs uh, from sporting events, players, teams, what have you, and you compare that to pieces of art. I feel like I need to start here. Why? Why did this become a thing for you? I mean, I think I'm still searching for the answer to that question. Uh, why does it? Why did it become a thing? It started. Uh, I work in sports, and I tend to view things from a sports lens. I'm a big mm -hmm. sports fan across the board, and uh, that also applies to when I go to museums and see artwork, and immediately conjures up sports references. Uh, I started posting them to my personal Instagram account. I'm not big on pictures of myself or pictures of food, but I uh, thought it'd be funny. I take pictures of sort of interesting things I see. And then when I go to museums, give them captions. And over time, had friends tell me that I should make it its own account. So I started doing that a few years ago. And then it evolved into, uh, instead of them being captions on photos, being more comparisons, um, mm -hmm. kind of what resonated with folks. So. Uh, I don't know how to answer your question other than I've been doing it for a while now and just feels right to to keep doing it, I guess. No, I love that. And it's it's one of those things where when I first came across your Twitter account, Art But Make It Sports, it was a while ago, I don't even know, maybe two years ago, whenever. It was still, I don't want to say I was like one of the first followers or anything, but it was before you had like really taken off. And I remember it popped up on my timeline and I saw the picture. I don't remember what specific one it was. And I just thought this is such a beautifully strange intersection between one of my favorite things, sports. Another thing I like to look at is art. I was like, all right, this is kind of cool. I'll follow it. And uh, it's blown up ever since. So I guess for you, did you ever expect this to kind of take off the way it has? Yeah, so <laughs> for a while it was my family, my friends, like my mom's friends, <laughs> like the only people who follow the account. Uh, it blew up, started blowing up during the NBA playoffs last mm -hmm. last season. Uh, yeah, I kind of knew it would uh, <laughs> it would blow up at some point. I spend a lot of time on on Twitter, and I sort of know what good content is and, and sort of what kind of content tends to resonate with people. Not that I cared necessarily if it blew up or not, as I, I would do it if it had an audience of a hundred versus whatever it has now. Um, but I had a pretty good sense, uh, especially as, you know, a, a handful of the tweets started getting traction and, and started to see it, it grow and eventually it kind of hit an inflection point where it just sort of churned and sustained itself in terms of, um you know getting noticed but yeah I, I had a pretty good idea that it uh it it blow up at some point you had a good idea you had struck gold is what i'm hearing uh struck gold i guess in terms of people following i don't think there's no struck gold in terms of money <laughs> um but I, i'm still still trying to think through how not that i again not that i necessarily care but um still thinking through how that might might come together. I, I definitely want to keep the integrity of the account and don't want to do things like ads. And part of mm -hmm. why I started the account was because it was started making it its own thing was, was kind of fed up with just the same content showing up on my timeline and sponsored posts and just the idea of influencers in general and them selling things like fit tea and just garbage that people does, don't actually need. Um, so the last thing I want to do is, is turn into that. Um, but yeah, I guess struck gold in terms of, uh, I guess creating a, uh, a engaged community of, of interesting folks that, that enjoy the, the niche intersection, that same niche intersection that I do. I, I've always been curious about this, right? Cause I'm guessing you see something during a game, if you're watching it or people send you images, how do you then take that image? And then compare that to artwork because it's been sculptures, paintings, drawings, 
there's some weird like abstract things that you've been able to compare with it. How are you able to make those comparisons? Yeah, it's funny because a lot of people now with the the rise of Chat GPT and, and AI, every every day it seems now so it's like, oh, this is this is AI. And I always laugh. I'm like, could you imagine if if I sat there and I was just using AI and making this account and like, what would be the point of that? Like there'd be, I don't make money from it. It wouldn't even be fun. Um, So I have almost 10,000 images on my phone of uh, artwork that I've seen at museums and galleries. Uh, I used to travel a bunch for work. And whenever I'd go to a new city, I try to hit up a museum there. Uh, so amassed a, a large library of, of photos, most of which uh, I've memorized, um, at least the order of them on my phone and kind of know where to look. And right, museums tend to have a theme, uh, right? Either it's modern art or, uh, you know, old school stuff. And so that's sort of within this folder. Um, so when something happens in sports, either it's something I, I see because I'm watching the game or I'm on Twitter, uh, or something that somebody tags me in, right? They might see a photo and, and tag the account, and then I see the photo, or they'll you know DM it or send mm-hmm. it in. Um, so source the the imagery that way, and then it's thinking through. You know, sometimes it's like, okay, I know exactly what this would be. Right? This is pretty easy, or um, you know, it's I have the exact photo on my my phone. Sometimes it's you know, this is a theme in art history. I don't know quite which one works the best of, you know, which version of Christ on the cross or, you know, the Ascension fits well, but it's, you know, it's clearly that. And then it's, you know, searching through, you know, images of that art history theme. Uh, And then finally, it's, it could be something along the lines of, uh, you know, this looks like an artist's style. Um, I don't know quite which piece of that artist, uh, but, you know, I have a pretty good sense that it's probably something they that they've done. There's a picture, a Joe Murphy photo, a few uh, two months ago, a month ago, of uh, Russell Westbrook, uh, and he was on the ground. Um, it was an overhead shot, uh, and he had like the the top of the paint, uh, this half a circle, um, and some figures, and you know, sort of one dominating blue color. And it's like, all right, this looks like it could be a Kandinsky. I don't quite know exactly which one. But, you know, he tends to have, I knew it wouldn't be a match on faces just because it, and figures, because mm-hmm. it was just, it was too different. Like it wasn't, it wasn't something I'd see in a painting necessarily from the Renaissance or you know, Baroque. But, you know, this could be something abstract. It looks like Kandinsky, right? It's got the, the sort of shapes and um, same color scheme. And so it took a little while, but look through, you know, Kandinsky's catalog and, and landed on something. So, usually one of those things and it ends up working out totally uh based on kind of what you brought up as well i'm curious is there a single post or a tweet of yours where once you found that connection between the photograph and the piece of artwork where you just like sat back and you were like this is my masterpiece (laughs) is the has there been one yet I feel like it each each time, uh, right? It's you're sort of chasing that that hit of dopamine of like being able to put things together and and having that eureka moment of like, wow, these look exactly alike. Um, I'm I guess I don't think of it as like this is the you know the magnum opus or opus, excuse me, the of my work. But each time that I make one, it's like, oh, these match. Like that's cool. Let me try to do that again. And you know that's sort of why I. I keep doing it. So I, you mentioned too, like a lot of people are DMing you, uh, sending in photos, whether it's email, whatever. Uh, what's that kind of like for you to know, like there's people out there, people like me who live in Northern Wisconsin, who are seeing your stuff, loving your work, and they want to be a part of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it makes life easier for me. <laughs> I, don't know, I can't have <laughs> eyeballs everywhere all at once in terms of, you know, getting, a uh, getting content. And again, I have a, full-time job that has, well, I guess I won't say nothing to do with this because it's in sports, but basically has nothing to do with this, right? So uh, there's a limited time for me to, to source uh, and, and to watch games. I do I do tend to watch a, a ton of games. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's been a, it's a fun community and uh, it's fun to, you know, have your work get recognized and 
um, be able to to share it with others and then see them share it with others. Um, it's also fun to just see sort of the same accounts that I know that have been there from the very beginning um, because it just, it means it's sort of cultivated something grassroots and people have stuck around. So pretty cool. Well, I wish you the best of luck moving forward and taking whatever direction you want to take uh, this sort of pseudo career hobby of yours um, in the future. But in the meantime, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back on Up North at 4. <laughs> 